guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing this all new 2022 Toyota Camry SE. And a huge thank you to Stadium Toyota in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. These guys have a beautiful dealership right next to the Raymond James Stadium. I'll leave a link to their inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely suggest checking these guys out. So the wide body or XV version of the Camry has been part of Toyota's lineup since 1991. That's when the first generation or XV10 was released. Fast forward to 2019, Toyota actually ended up releasing the seventh generation of the wide body platform or XV70. And for 2022, this is the SE trim. That includes a two and a half liter four cylinder engine. And in this variant, it makes 203 horsepower at 6,600 RPM and 184 pound feet of torque. Made it with this eight speed automatic transmission. You can expect zero to 60 between six and a half to the high six second range which is very very quick considering this vehicle has a base price under 27,000 bucks and this is the se trim which gives us the sport tuned suspension making this a very very sporty ride with these relatively low profile tires too uh, but anyway this vehicle is also coming equipped with toyota safety sense 2.5 which gives us pre-collision system with pedestrian detection we get dynamic radar cruise we get lane tracing assist auto high beams road sign assist as well as a star safety system um, of course since 2018 all cameras are going to be getting the backup camera too the exterior is going to feature these 18 inch black machine finish alloy rims automatic by led headlamps with led automatic daytime running strips as well uh, we're gonna have the black front grille with sport mesh inserts as well as dual single outlet chrome tips in the rear uh, we're not gonna have the quad tips like we had in the XSE, but definitely a much better setup compared to what we had in the LE trim that we reviewed back in 2021. Uh, but inside, standard features are going to include a 7-inch touchscreen, 6 speakers, hands-free Bluetooth, USB ports all over this car. Uh, we're going to have a 4.2-inch heads-up little cluster uh, for the gauges, sport fabric seats with leather on the outside, really nice quality seats. Not true leather, just going to be soft tech, Syntex seats uh, with some cloth inserts, but you're going to see once we step inside. Really impressive seating in this car. Uh, we are going to have a couple options. The base price is going to be $26,800, and we're going to get about $1,200 in total options, including the blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert we're also gonna get the convenience package which gives the smart access garage home link as well as auto dimming rear view mirror which a little bit dated but it's definitely a great feature to have it's gonna have three garage settings on it as well we'll check all that out inside after about a thousand dollar destination charge we're gonna be sitting at a total vehicle price at around just twenty nine thousand dollars what do we get for that let's jump right in so up front you're gonna notice your led headlights you can see the projector bulb right over here with the high beam right next to it uh, the daytime running strips are not going to be on all the time when the car is on uh, but once you put it into drive you can definitely see these strips on the outside light up uh, with the rest of the headlights down here you have black headlight housing definitely aids with the aggression turn signal on the outside and i love the silver metallic paint not sure if you can pick it up right now in this relatively shady area but it really is a really beautiful color down here you can see no functional air curtain but i like these hexagonal designs uh, blacked out little front splitter ton of airflow for this radiator down here for the two and a half liter four cylinder a little more airflow up top and i love how we get those cross supports in front of it definitely making this chassis significantly stiffer we'll see once we pop this hood that we're also going to get some connections between the strut towers uh, the toyota badge right here pretty large housing your advanced safety features and the same little style cue outside no functional air curtain unfortunately no parking sensors up front either that's all coming on your xse but we'll take a step back and still take a look at the front styling love how the front end flares out to that toyota badge definitely giving you a sharp design but as far as the wheel and tire setup we can take a step right over here these are your 18 inch alloy rims they're going to have the black and aluminum contrast as far as the tires they're going to be hankook kinergy gts pretty solid all seasons uh, they're going to be 235 45 r18s so a little bit thicker of a sidewall compared to the xse we reviewed and the XSC also had 19 inch rims. So this vehicle, although it still has a sport tuned suspension, most likely has better ride quality since it does have slightly fatter sidewall tires. Uh, we're still not gonna have the plastic cladding outside the wheel well. You can see we're gonna have multiple pistons for the front brake caliper. And continuing along, we're still gonna have the chrome strip on the bottom part of this mirror, but we're not gonna have a camera down here. Uh, but not a big deal. The glass, as you see, is still gonna be very large. We got blind spot monitoring on this SE trim. That's a great feature to have. Unlike the XSE, this area, it's not gonna be blacked out. We're just gonna have some shiny chrome uh, for the outside of the door panel, but not a big deal. The B pillars blacked out. Uh, no tints, that's of course, that of course could be added in the aftermarket. But I didn't mention, we're also gonna get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. Uh, to lock the door right here, to unlock, you simply put your hand right over here. As far as the gas tank, it's not gonna be a push to open. I'll show where the latch is inside. Uh, we got the LED taillights, turn signals right here, and the reverse lights. Really nice taillight design. I love how it goes out 
all the way through the side of your side profile over here. Uh, not a functional air curtain, but definitely adds to your styling on your SE trim. Uh, the Toyota Camry badge, not a blacked out lip spoiler, but we still get a lip spoiler similar to what we had on the XSE. It's just not gonna be black. Uh, the Toyota Camry badge right here, shout out Stadium Toyota, SE badge right next to it. No rear parking sensors either. That's, an, that's unfortunate, but we still have the backup camera, which will definitely help you back this car up into parking spots. But as you see, you got the dual tipped exhaust. We're not gonna have the dual exhaust on both sides with the quad tips like we had in the XSC, but I still like the dual tips. Let's start this 2.5 liter four cylinder up and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was, of course, the sound of the two and a half liter four cylinder sold by Toyota for the Camry. So as soon as you figure out this latch, let's pop this hood. And it's a little bit tricky. The latch, you got to pick it up right here. Uh, we're not going to get struts. Unfortunately, I'll show you the process of this prop rod right over here. But here you have it. Two and a half liter four cylinder making 203 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque. Uh, not the most power, but made it to this eight speed automatic transmission. Enough to get this 3,300 pound sedan to 60, around six and a half to 6.8 seconds. So pretty quick car. Batteries on the driver's side, not the best for weight balance, but as you see, the engine is pushed to the left quite a bit. We get a steel connection between the two strut towers. So acting like a strut tower brace, definitely keeping this chassis much, much stiffer. And in front of your radiator up front, we also have those two connections definitely helping this chassis stiffness but that's about it what you see is basically what you get i'll try to show you the process of putting this hood back down without dropping it on my head but here you have it just let go of it take a step back you can see that front styling one last time unfortunately the daytime running strips are only working when the car is in drive but anyway we can take a step over here and take a look at the interior in this 2022 Toyota Camry SE. And it's nice that we get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. Stepping inside, I like the soft touch materials for the upper part. Really impressive door panel for a vehicle that's gonna be starting under 27,000 uh, bucks. The door handle, it's not gonna be the best weight resisted. It starts to resist about halfway through, uh, but it integrates really nicely with this aluminum strip. Just some hard plastic underneath it, uh, but not a big deal. The elbow area where your arm will rest is gonna be very soft touch. Power one touch for all four windows. That's a great feature. Uh, we got the power four way adjustable mirrors right next to it. Um, hard touch right here, but we're gonna have some storage down here, fit a 12 ounce in both of these trays. Uh, however, make sure you have a lid on them because with this angle, you'll definitely be spilling some of your drinks. Uh, but stepping inside, no nameplate for the Camry, not a big deal though. We got full power seats. You can lift them, drop them, recline them, and you have four way lumbar control as well. Well, just two way lumbar control, I apologize. But as far as the seats, they are absolutely gorgeous. I love this faux leather trim on the outside. Really high quality trim with some cloth inlets over here. Definitely making it much softer of a seat with some really nice stiff bolsters, keeping you relatively supported in this SE trim. Uh, the bottom portion is gonna be a little bit softer than the top, uh, but not a big deal. Definitely a fan of these seats with some suede Alcantara right over here. The headrest, very nice contrast stitched and pretty soft overall. But taking a step inside this 2022 Camry SE, let's really check it out. So the first thing we notice is gonna be the steering wheel, very similar to what we had in the XSC, basically the exact same thing. You can adjust the heads up little infotainment with these buttons right here. Uh, phone settings, you can adjust the volume, voice commands, forward collision assist, you get the lane departure warning, you can adjust between AM, FM, and Sirius. You get the cruise control, radar cruise, hill descent control, and you can skip the songs right over here. Uh, behind the steering wheel, we got these paddle shifters for this eight speed auto transmission. And the paddle shifters are very large, very nice area for your hand, definitely very easy to grip. Behind the paddle shifters, we have our headlight and wiper stocks. We have auto headlights, very satisfying to click when it comes to the turn signals. No rain sensing wipers, unfortunately, but not a big deal. As the rain picks up, you simply increase the speed of your wipers right over here. Uh, but anyway, as far as this display, your little heads up cluster up here, you can adjust it with these buttons. You can adjust between vehicle settings that can adjust the brightness, sensitivity, rear cross traffic alert, tire pressure warning system, rear seat reminder, and all that. We can come out of there by pressing this back button. Press it one more time, you can adjust all these settings. You see the messages, you can see your forward heads up when it comes to the advanced safety features, overall information, so the trip, you see total MPGs, fuel tank information, average MPGs, eco indicator, kind of shows you how much throttle you're using. Let's see if it adjusts right now. No, it doesn't, okay. But anyway, continue along, you also have a digital speedo. That's probably where I'm gonna be leaving this screen at all times. Down here, you have your TPMS again and a blank screen right next to it. But again, my personal favorite is just to look at this digital speedometer. As far as the gauge cluster, I like the 6,800 RPM 
uh, tachometer, pretty high revving four cylinder engine, 160 mile an hour uh, speedometer. Beneath that, we have the fuel tank over here. We have the coolant temperature on this side. We have a thermometer and a clock right up top above your digital speedo. We also see the odometer, how many miles were on the vehicle, and that's about it. Above that, as far as the dashboard, everything's gonna be super soft touch. I like this trim over here, really high quality. Love this leather contrast stitch too, right above your glove box. And we mentioned in the XSE video that this um, piano black plastic was like a carbon flash metallic. That's not the same thing here. This is just gonna be an old school piano black plastic, but we are gonna have some carbon flash little metallic on the outside of this plastic trim separating the driver and the passenger anyway up top over here we have our seven inch display no not the nine inch we had in the xse of a silk very nice display very responsive touchscreen we're not gonna have navigation but if you have apple carplay or android auto connected you can press this map button and it's going to show you the map from your apple carplay or android auto so that's a great touch as far as the menu we'll see everything we have you can adjust the audio the bass uh the treble whatnot next week you can see the phone settings we don't have one connected right now but once you do you can see all that information right there as far as the apps, none are downloaded, but this vehicle does come equipped with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, these are the overall settings for the setup. I don't know how I got here, but we can take a look at it here. Nevertheless, so as far as general settings, you get the clock, language, projection. You can take a look at all of them right here. I'm not going to read through all of these. Uh, Bluetooth, you can set it up. We don't have anything connected. Audio settings, you can adjust them right here. So common and radio. Phone, we don't have one connected here. Voice, uh, you can adjust the voice volume. Uh, train voice recognition. So if you wanted to just respond better to your voice, you could train it right here. Uh, but pretty self-explanatory overall. The vehicle settings allow you to adjust uh, customization. It lets you put the car into valet mode and the dealer information. As far as vehicle customization, you can adjust the door locks, climate settings, light settings, and convenience services. But coming out of here, you also have Wi-Fi hotspot, the apps. You can see them right here. Uh, data usage message, connect USB, and all that. We don't have to go through all this going back. You also have projection, which allows you to mirror your phone onto your screen. Uh, beneath that, you got your hazards, two air vents, dual zone, automatic climate control, no heated or cooled seats. That's not really expected with the vehicle. It's going to be starting below 27,000 bucks. Down here, you got your USB port, 12 volt right here. Good spot for a radar detector. Uh, this area would be a wireless charger if it came equipped on this vehicle, but it does not. Still a great spot to hold your phone. You can open this up right here. You can easily fit like seven or eight iPhone Pro Maxes in there. Very spacious little center cubby uh, but beneath that behind that you have your cup holders they're gonna be outlined in aluminum they're gonna be rubberized with these little grips keeping your stuff in place uh, as far as the key fob for this camry you can take a look at it right over here pretty basic key fob no remote start or anything like that but you get your lock unlock trunk opening and your panic button as far as this gear selector for the eight speed automatic transmission we can take a look at the rear view camera right here so actually pretty solid resolution that was like my biggest complaint with the xse the revolution was just, resolution was just not very good uh, but that's not the case here i think this is actually better resolution maybe because the screen is a little bit smaller uh but still i definitely don't have a problem with the resolution on the screen you can adjust the width too so here it gives you like a fisheye lens so if you want to see like what's going on on your sides you can press that button right over there uh, but continuing along we do get manual shift modes on this uh, transmission it's just not in the correct direction pull it back to downshift push it forward to upshift uh, but not a big deal since we do get paddle shifters that's what i'll personally be using for the manual shift controls but throwing it right back in the park behind that we got eco normal and sport mode we'll start this car off in normal transition in the sport and see what the overall differences are uh, behind that we have this center console so it's not going to be stitched with leather like it was in the xsc but still a very soft padded material nice area to rest your arm and it's massive you can easily fit two arms on here with no problem you're not going to be arguing with your passenger about who gets the armrest opening it up right here absolutely massive storage you can easily fit a 12 pack in here uh, we're going to have a usb port right here and a usb c right next to it uh, but yeah really impressive space in here too uh, and again very impressed with the softness uh, continuing to the glove box though we can take a look right here not not very impressed with the glove box space as you see there really isn't a whole lot you can fit the owner's manual and that's really about it you take the owner's manual out i'm sure you probably won't be able to fit more than like one pair of shoes if you can even fit that in there uh, but again not a big deal nice glove box you definitely fit some car accessories in there coming up top we have the auto dimming rear view mirror with the three garage settings right here too it's just a little bit dated it's not a frameless mirror but it's still auto dimming and it's very well zoomed i don't know if you can pick it up to the camera uh, but trust me, you can really have a great view out of this rear view cam out of this rear view mirror when it comes to seeing out of your rear windshield. Uh, back here, no moonroof like we had on the XSC. Uh, but we push this button right here. We have a sunglass holder. That's pretty nice. You don't see that very often. Your SOS and your interior lights right over here. To the left of the steering wheel, we have our automatic headlamps with traction control, which you can turn off. Hold this button and you can open up your trunk 
and hold this button, you open up your gas tank. Uh, down here, you can open up your hood too, and you have your electronic, well not electronic, but you have your emergency brake. You have a little bit of secret storage over here. You can put some secret stuff. Uh, the steering wheel is tilt and telescope, and you pull this latch right here, you can tilt and telescope the steering wheel. Uh, we can take a look at the window sticker, see if I may have missed anything. Uh, but again, the base price in this vehicle is going to be 26835 We are going to have about 1200 bucks in options with the blind spot monitoring and convenience package, which are both great features. That gives you the rear cross traffic alert, blind spot detection, smart access. You get the three garage home link settings and an auto dimming rear view mirror. So definitely makes this vehicle much more premium. After about a thousand bucks in the destination, you can expect the total vehicle price to still be right at 29,000 bucks. This vehicle does have a couple add-ons, which you can check out right over here, making it sit right below 31. Uh, but still, as far as standard equipment, which you will get on a $27,000 Camry SE, you can get your two and a half liter four cylinder making 203 horses, 184 pound feet of torque, eight speed transmission, sport tuned suspension, a uh, full Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 pre collision system, pedestrian detection. I'm not going to read through all that. You guys can pause, take a look at all the standard features. You really do get quite a bit. 18 inch rims, bi LED combination headlights with auto on and off feature. That's your automatic headlights with automatic daytime LED running lights. Uh, but anyway, your interior gives you the seven inch touchscreen, six speakers, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay compatible. Uh, remote keyless entry system, as well as the $1,200 in options right over here. Pretty impressive value. Look at this gas mileage, 28 city, 39 on the highway. So this eight speed automatic transmission really gets this vehicle idled down to the low RPMs when you're cruising on the highway. So combined, you're gonna get 32 miles per gallon, definitely at the top of this vehicle segment. Really impressive. We'll check all that out once we take it out for the drive. And remember, this vehicle has a sport tune suspension, which is gonna really liven up this vehicle when it comes to being a sports sedan, costing around 30,000 bucks. But that's about it for the front seat, guys. Really impressive so far. Let's hop out back and see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the materials. All right, stepping inside this 2022 Camry SE. Up top, we're not gonna have any soft touch for the upper part of the door panel. This grab handle, it's very nice aluminum, and it integrates really nicely with this trim. It's just not the best weight resist. It's a little bit flimsy towards the beginning. You still get your padded armrest, very nice storage. Power One Touch for the window, that's a great feature too. Real Power One Touch, you guys can see right here, even on the way up. Definitely a thumbs up for Toyota for the SE trim. A little bit of storage down here, pretty solid storage down there. You can easily fit a 12 ounce over here. Uh, but again, make sure everything has a lid on it because this angle may not be very accommodating. Stepping inside over here, no Camry nameplate, unfortunately. As far as these seats, we can unbutton them or unbelt them right here. I like how the padding goes all the way out to the door frame, definitely a nice touch. Uh, you got some cloth inlays over here, making it much softer for the passengers and a little bit of suede right over here. Very soft headrest too, really impressive seats. As far as the legroom, sitting behind my seat settings, I'm six feet tall and let's see what we got. So yeah, really impressive legroom. As you can see, I have at least like five, six inches of leg space. Love the padding over here for this map pocket. You get map pockets behind both driver and a front passenger. Unlike the XSC, we're not gonna get any vents back here. Not a big deal though, since the XSC does come with rear vents, we're not gonna have any USB or USB-C ports, but you can easily fit like three or four iPhone Pro Maxes in this little cubby right over there. But as far as this little center cubby for like an armrest for your passengers, you have to jab your hand in there and there's no string, but it's very soft, very nice area to rest your arm. Two cup holders, not rubberized, but you can definitely fit some cups. I've never seen square cups, but should still be more than accommodating enough. Uh, but that's better for the back seat guys really spacious definitely impressive i just wish we had some air vents back here uh let's check out the trunk real quick and then take this car out for a drive all right guys so to get into this trunk there's a button right over here once we find it let's see it does pop up a little bit for you but i don't like how the trunk gets really really close to the glass i feel like that could be a problem long term i'm sure toyota engineers have thought it through uh, but it does kind of scare me a little bit uh, but anyway these uh, hinges little hinges are going to be outlined in this plastic which will keep some of your cargo safe but they will still crush your cargo if you pack your trunk a little bit too high so definitely be aware of that uh, but as far as the opening absolutely massive you can fit any size luggage back here uh, you probably won't be able to fit the largest tv because although those seats do fall down 60 40 the opening for the seat to pass through a tv is not the largest i wouldn't expect you to fit bigger than like a 55 maybe 60 inch tv back here uh, but as far as suitcases golf bags especially with these cutouts you can fit just about any size suitcase or golf bag uh, but anyway we can shut this thing up take a step back you can take a look at the rear styling one last time and let's take this 2022 camry se out for a drive all right guys now we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2022 camry se let's take it out for a drive and first thing i notice is the gear selector i love how it clicks consistently 
Um, I know most gear selectors do that, but historically Toyota's had some real funky gear selectors for their automatic transmissions. It's like all like jaggedy and stuff. I'm sure most of you guys know what I'm talking about. And I definitely prefer the way this just straight clicks back into drive. Other than that though, steering wheel. I love this leather trim. Uh, the LE that we reviewed in this channel didn't have a leather wrapped steering wheel. It had a plastic steering wheel. I'm not quite sure if the 2022 LE is the same way. Uh, but for the SE trim, it's definitely nice to have this upgraded leather wrapped steering wheel. And just stepping out here, barely on the throttle, going to like 1800 RPM. Very torquey four cylinder engine. We're already at like 30 miles per hour, which is the speed limit. And just cruising at the speed limit. Basically, zero wind noise. The car just drove by. I didn't even hear him. And these are only single pane windows, right? That's the rear windows, front windows. Yeah, only single pane windows. And the wind noise essentially not exist really quiet cabin we'll, we'll take it to some higher speeds we have a multiple lane highway coming up in a little bit we should be able to take the car to around 50 miles an hour see if there's any added wind noise or road noise uh, but just cruising right now around 30 you hear just about nothing all right guys we have a little open road right here we'll see how this car can accelerate off the line we're not going to floor it i don't want to spin uh, this dealership's car's tires but we'll try to get a good launch about half throttle then lean into it right here Ooh, oh wow okay okay Wow, this thing can actually pick up. We don't have to push it a whole lot farther than that. Once you cross about 3,500 RPM, there's a serious surge in torque, and it continues to pull all the way to the red line, uh, just below 7,000 RPM. So from 3,500 to 7,000, you have a pretty solid torque shot. Uh, very impressive motor. I can definitely see this car doing zero to 60 in the mid six second range. And that was only a normal mode. Once you put the car into sport, it'll sharpen up the throttle response, it'll sharpen up the steering, as well as the shifts too, to definitely make them more crisp. We'll check all that out in this video. Uh, just my first impressions in normal mode, very good acceleration. And on the brakes right here, the brake pedal feels very strong too. Really impressive, not the most sensitive though. So in the, in the initial touch of the brake pedal, it's not gonna feel like you're flying through the windshield at all, uh, but it's still gonna have a very satisfying feel through the pedal. And as soon as you get the chance, we'll step out onto this multiple lane highway. It's a little busy right now and the sun's not really letting me see a whole lot. Uh, but as soon as we get the chance, which it looks like we do, we'll take a step out right here. And about half throttle right here, going to about 4,800 RPM. We're already at highway speeds and a little bit above. And we're still just in normal mode. And the steering feels very sharp, pretty light. We'll see what the differences are in sport. Uh, but in normal mode right now, the steering does feel very direct, just pretty, pretty light. And we're cruising around 50 miles an hour on this multiple lane highway. You hear a tiny bit of wind noise, basically none. Remember, these are still single pane windows, uh, but cruising on the highway around 50, uh, the wind noise, very, very limited, and the road noise basically non-existent. Even less road noise versus the XLE or the XSE, probably because of the tires. The tires are a little bit fatter in profile. These are gonna be 45s versus the XSE's 40s. Uh, but taking a step right here a little bit faster than we should, essentially zero body roll. This sport suspension definitely does its job. And right here on this pretty rough pavement, still basically zero road noise. Very comfortable ride. Uh, we'll throw it in the sport right over here and see what the differences are immediately. Uh, the transmission gets a little bit more aggressive. It downshifted me a couple of gears right away. And the steering, feels slightly heavier slightly i wouldn't say that it's a much heavier steering rack but you do feel a little bit more weight through the wheel i uh, will get we'll get situated right here get to a complete stop and see how it is off the line in sport mode so right here on the gas ooh, pretty strong wow wow yeah we don't have to push much farther than that it definitely feels stronger off the line the throttle definitely is more sensitive in sport uh with no question uh, but the overall acceleration is about the same. It's just the sensitivity picks up in sport. Uh, but I'm going to throw in the POV hat, try to give you guys a first-hand look driving this 2022 Camry SE. And I'll catch back with you in one second. All right, guys, taking a step out here in sport in the Camry XSC, we'll throw it into the manual shift modes too and try out these paddle shifters. So right here, starting off in first gear, let's go. On the guess about halfway. Wow, really quick shifts. Whew, nice. That wasn't even that hard to throttle. When we get to like 40 miles per hour pretty quickly, but I'll try to be quiet, try to pick up these downshifts when I put it into second, in one second right here. You don't really hear a whole lot, but it's just instant. It just blips the throttle really, really nicely. Let's check out this vehicle's 
body roll and turning radius. You see not a whole lot of body roll. You hear all that stuff flying around. Turning radius too. Look at this. Unbelievably, unbelievably sharp. We'll pop right back out here and check out the acceleration. Boom. Wow. Pretty quick car, guys. I'm definitely not um, overplaying this vehicle's acceleration. It'll definitely do zero to 60 quicker than seven seconds. Uh, maybe even six and a half. I've seen people get 6.4. Uh, maybe not with these 18 inch Honk hooks, maybe with some stickier tires, uh, but we're not really getting much wheel spin. So I think we can do 6.5 in this car. Obviously we're not gonna be testing it out zero to 60. And right here, cruising around 35 on this pretty rough road you can hear. Very quiet, very composed cabin. Really impressive car. Uh, we'll take a step out onto this road on the left in one second. Is it this one? It is this one. So right here, we'll take a step. There's some serious craters here too. And you will really get the sense of this vehicle's capability when it comes to handling the bumps. I'm gonna try to avoid one bump because it's really massive. And this car is just not built for bumps like that right here. We're not gonna hit this one at speed because it's really, really rough. But okay, come back out here. You can see, big bump, boom. You didn't even feel it right here. Pretty rough stretch of pavement and boom. It just drives over like it's nothing, boom. Pretty soft ride quality, really, really capable luxury sport sedan. We'll put it right back into the manual shift mode, start off in first gear. We're not gonna punch it in first, but right here, second gear. Let's see what we got. Not a lot of torque, boom, now we do. Goodbye. This thing can move. This is really not a slouch. It doesn't really have a lot of low end. You do have to wait for the revs to cross like the 3500 mark before you can really start feeling the torque. But listen, wow, we can't downshift in the first. Pretty smart of Toyota not letting us to do that. But once you get to like about like 14, 13 miles per hour, it does allow you to downshift in the first. But as soon as we get the chance, we'll see this turning radius one more time in this Camry. Uh, and I'll catch back with you in one second. All right, all right, guys, stepping back out into this multiple lane highway, we'll start off in second gear and on the gas. Ooh, it automatically downshifts you in the second. I guess we were in third. Ooh, that, okay, that was actually really delayed putting us into fourth. Uh, but anyway, as you see, just half throttle getting onto the highway. We got to X amount of miles per hour pretty quickly and just cruising here around speed limit speeds. Listen very quiet cabin and we got a twisty coming up in one second should give you a good sense on how responsive this vehicle's steering becomes because remember we are still in sport and right here boom as soon as you turn the wheel the vehicle responds instantly and the sport suspension definitely aids to how sporty this vehicle feels as it should i'm sure that's expected that's why you would go with the se trim over the le uh, but right here, we hit this turn a little bit faster than we should. See the body roll one last time, throwing it in. Little body roll, basically zero understeer, and coming back out here. Woo! Definitely a sporty sedan. Hope you can pick it up to the camera. I am 100%. I think this is a fantastic value, considering that the base price, if you can forgo the blind spot monitoring and the convenience package, it's gonna be sitting under 27,000 bucks before destination. I truly believe that this is one of the best entry level sports sedan sitting under 30,000 bucks. Other than that guys, huge thank you to Stadium Toyota for making this review possible. A really impressive car. This is truly one of the most value packed vehicles on the road today. And I really appreciate you guys for watching. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You know, I have endless gratitude for all subscribers. You know, the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate all your constant support. Uh, but again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Uh, leave a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment, let me know if there's any specific vehicles you'd like to see me review on this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those for you as soon as possible. Again though, thank you so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.